Welcome back everyone for a down and dirty House of the Dragon watch party. Now as you know, House of the Dragon is the Game of Thrones prequel show, set 200 years before the reign of Bran the Broken. <laughs> Bran the Broken gets me every time. Anyway, the biggest, most pressing question is, will this show be like the first few seasons of Game of Thrones, which, you know, were actually good, or will they be like the later seasons that were a complete disaster? Well, there's one thing Game of Thrones came out very strong on. Yeah, it was the boobs, the butts, and the head. Well, I meant chopping off heads, but I guess this head qualifies too. But yes, sex and violence. It's what Game of Thrones, especially early Game of Thrones, had so much of. It was the show's specialty. It really set the show and the world of Westeros apart from everything else. This is where House of the Dragons will at least try to follow Game of Thrones. It's a civil war with dragons, there will be insane violence everywhere. So then what about the sex? Game of Thrones had a lot of it. Gratuitous sex and nudity, it really shook up the landscape. The first episode alone had Tyrion in a whorehouse getting pleasured by multiple women. It had Viserys stripping down Danny as she got in her bath. It had Drogon taking his new wife in the traditional Dothraki style. And it had Jaime and Cersei in their twin cest. When you lay it all out, that's quite a lot for a first episode. You can understand why it kept everyone's attention. So what about House of the Dragon? Will the new show be able to match the original and gratuitous sex? totally needless but titillating nudity? The answer is yes, it certainly can if, and that's a big if, if the new showrunners and HBO want to go that way. George R.R. R. Martin is kind of a weird guy and kind of always imagining weird sex situations and then writes them into his stories. You'll see. So let's look at all the sex matchups in House of the Dragon. Sit tight, some of these are a doozy. Let's start off with the one that maybe defines the show the most. King Viserys was married to his cousin, Ema Aaron. They had one daughter, Rhaenyra. That's who the show is about. But his wife dies, so naturally all the scheming women at King's Landing make their move. No one does it better than 17-year-old Elicit Hightower. People make a lot of comparisons, and you can definitely assume she was a lot like Marjorie Tyrell or her grandmother. It's reasonable to assume she made a late night visit to the king's bedchamber. Women do that a lot in the Red Keep. Either way, Viserys totally wants her and marries her. It's unclear if the show will go as far back as when Alyssa and Viserys marry, but it's certainly possible. Now let's cover her rival Rhaenyra because she's a hot mess. Now it's worth pointing out that everything in the source material is suspect. That is, it's written by an in-universe historian who is gathering from multiple sources, and so it may not be accurate. Plus, the maester writing it himself may not be reliable if he's trying to advance his own agenda. This is important because it claims the young Princess Rhaenyra was in love with her king's guard, Kristen Cole. She wanted to seduce him, but he rejected her advances, as he was true to his vows. She was heartbroken and wanted to learn how she could get him to see her as a lover. Enter her uncle, Damon. Now, I'm going to quote directly from the source material so you can see how it's written. Note, this is all apparently from the court jester, a dwarf like Tyrion named Mushroom. Damon offers to help Rhaenyra seduce Kristen Cole, as told by Mushroom. He began by giving her kissing lessons. From there, the prince went on to show his niece how best to touch a man to bring him pleasure an exercise that sometimes involved Mushroom himself and his alleged enormous member. Damon taught the girl to disrobe enticingly, suckled at her teats to make them larger and more sensitive, and flew with her on Dragonback to lonely rocks in Blackwater Bay, where they could disport naked all day, unobserved, and the princess could practice the art of pleasuring a man with her mouth. At night, he would smuggle her from her rooms dressed as the page boy and take her secretly to brothels of the Street of Silk, where the princess could observe men and women in the act of love and learn more of these womanly arts from the heralds of King's Landing. So yeah, that's a good taste of George R. R. Martin's writing, and based on the timeline, that could seriously all be in the first episode. 
If so, it could put the first episode of Game of Thrones to shame. But it depends on whether it is actually true, and if the creators want to actually show all that on screen. As of yet, there has been no mention of an actor to play Mushroom, so it seems like that part probably won't be included. It is worth noting this is likely Rhaenyra's wedding, and the trailer includes this shot of Damon looking at her. You can imagine why. But if we back up, before she is married, she tries to seduce Kristen Cole one more time. It says, She found him alone in the White Sword Tower, barred the door, and slipped off her cloak to reveal her nakedness underneath. I saved my maidenhood for you, she told him. He rejects her again on account of his vows, so instead she sleeps with Harwin Strong on a whim. It's worth noting her three children are believed to be his bastard children, as her husband Lenor is gay, and again this could all well be the first episode. Now Damon is doing more than teaching his niece how to pleasure a man. In fact, this guy is going to sleep with most of the main women in the show. Myceria is also his lover early on. They get it on a lot and he gets her pregnant. That is why he's trying to send her away with a dragon egg. He wants his own kids and dragon riders. Whether we'll see all this love making or not is up to how they decide to handle this storyline. He originally has a wife up in the veil vale that he hates, but luckily for him, she dies. With no other good prospects, he marries Lena Valerian, this woman, who he is related to. They have two daughters, but then she dies. So after his second wife, Lena, dies and Rhaenyra's husband, Lenor, dies, they decide to go ahead and get married. Rhaenyra marries her uncle and Damon marries his niece, because that is what this guy comes up with. It's worth noting they marry quickly and essentially off-screen in the book. However, Rhaenyra does give birth to her son Aegon shortly thereafter, implying she may have already been pregnant. While Dan and Dave probably would have included several lustful scenes between Damon and Rhaenyra, it remains to be seen if the current crop will do the same. Now over on the greens, Rhaenyra's half-brother Aegon, the guy who will become king over her, will marry his sister Helena. Keep in mind, a brother and sister getting married and having kids is very popular with George R.R. R. Martin and HBO executives because their brain works different from yours. Now, Aegon is not a very faithful husband and spends a lot of time in the pleasure houses of King's Landing. In fact, when King Viserys dies and Queen Allison puts in motion her scheme to make him the king, that is essentially where he is. Again, let's quote what Martin actually wrote. The testimony of Mushroom claims Sir Kristen Cole found the young king-to-be drunk and naked in a flea-bottom rat pit, where two gutter snipes with filed teeth were biting and tearing at each other for his amusement, whilst a girl who could not have been more than 12 pleasured his member with her mouth. Ah, what a great image of the usurper king. You would think they would probably keep most of this, though they may age up that girl a little bit. Or maybe not. I guess it depends if the people making this show are as weird as George R.R. R. Martin is writing it. It would be telling if this were the one thing they were faithful on in the source material. So that's a basic rundown of all the lust and sex that could appear in season one. There are various rumors about random stuff in King's Landing and maybe uses of more extras than just the actual show actors. Perhaps the intention is to veer away from the source material, but instead just make up stuff to fill the void? We'll have to wait and see. Be sure you're subscribed, I'll cover it all. Have a great day, I'll see you at the next watch party.